two numbers together and then output the result. There are some other operators in C++ that you might not know about. This is, the, this is why I'm going to be teaching this video. Operators. So you should know most of these operators that we have already laid out here. These are the basic arithmetic operators. For example, the plus sign, the minus sign, that is the time sign, then the divide sign, and then on the right hand side you have the greater than and less than signs. In the middle we have the percentage sign, and that's not actually saying percentage, it's saying modulo. What this means is that if I do, for example, I don't know, 4 modulo 3, it will do 4 divided by 3 and tell you the remainder. So 4 divided by 3 is 1, remainder 1. So the answer will be 1. Let's give you a better example. Uh, let's do 7 modulo 3. 7 divided by 3 is 2, remainder 1. So the answer to, eight, uh, to 7 modulo 3 will be 1. Here's the next sequence of functions. Well, not functions. Operators. They are the compound assignment operators. The compound assignment operators um, uh, are two um, uh, are two operators joined together. For example, plus equals or minus equals. There are some other ones you don't really need to know about them as much as these two. We have the increment and decrement operators, which we're going to be using only as prefixes this episode. You can use them as suffixes, so like a plus plus rather than plus plus a but it's much harder to use them as suffixes. Then we have the conditional ternary operator. This is the question mark and the colon that are used in conjunction with each other. We'll cover that in more detail in the rest of the episode. Let's begin programming. I've already set up my workspace with my iStream, namespace standard, blah blah blah, int main, um, return zero. And basically, we are going to be, um, uh, okay, we are going to be um, doing the operators. So, um, so we're going to basically, I've, I'm going to divide into little sort of sections. So we've got one that says basic arithmetics. Um, and yeah, that's going to be on a line. And then we'll do some of that. And then we'll do like another one so it'll be like like blah, blah, blah. obviously not that because that's absolute rubbish but yeah so we are going to be doing some operators you can actually even nest operators inside C out so you could do like a plus b a plus b and it would output the result so let's start by setting up a few basic integers um, Let's do int a equals 4, int b equals 6, and int c equals 3. It's random numbers. So, yeah, let's do some, some, yeah, some operators. These, all of these basic arithmetic operators will, um, like, none of the basic arithmetic operators will ever modify the values of the, of the numbers themselves. So A will always be 4, B will always be 6, and C will always be 3. So, let's do our first one. So, we will guess. Okay, let's do... Let's guess Guess what the first one's going to be. The plus sign. Oh my goodness. So, we're going to see out A plus B. And I'm going to put a comment at the end of this line to determine what we think is going to happen. Well, we think that the result of 4 plus 6, or A plus B, will be 10. Because the value of a is 4 and the value of b is 6. So the computer will get those values and substitute them in. So basically it says 4 plus 6, which is obviously 10. So the next one is the minus sign. Let's do a minus b. We know that 4 minus 6 is minus 2. Because a minus b is minus 2. So that's what I'm predicting will happen. Let's do a times b. 4 times 6 is 24, so that is what we predict will happen, because these are just basic arithmetic, so they'll do exactly the same as in normal maths, 
um, because maths is just you can use maths in programming. Um, I am quite good at maths myself, so I like to use it in programming. So yeah, let's do another one. So let's do b divided by c, because then we get a whole number result, which is two. However, if you don't get a whole number result and it's pretty ugly, it will round it. So if I do c out, uh, I don't know, uh, a divided by c, then this will return one. Even though the answer is one, one point three 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 blah 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 blah, blah um, one point three recurring. Um, it will always answer one because we're using integers here, not floating point numbers. If we were using float b and whatever, then it would be a different story and it would output that value. However, we're using int, an integer is only a whole number, so it will only ever output a whole number. So, um, the other ones in this little section here are the greater than and less than signs. However, you can see that the C out uses these greater than and less than signs in its, uh, well, the less than sign anyway, um, in the actual thing. So it doesn't like having C out and then something and then that sign again because it gets a bit confused. So we need a Boolean value here to represent um, the answer because if something is greater than something else, then that's a true or false statement. Um, so if I do boolean um, g, if I do boolean greater equals a is greater than c, then what that will do is it will set the value of greater to true because a is greater than c. 4 is greater or bigger than 3. So if we see out greater, uh, and yes, I always, well, not always, but I sometimes forget to do this. Make sure you're putting end out at the end of all of your lines. It's very good practice, um, but um, can be a bit annoying if you've forgotten and then you have to do everything again. Well, not every single line, but in C out, it's useful to put end out at the end of lines when you don't want to join them together. Because then our answer for everything would be literally like this. Like this. <laughs> Just imagine that, we wouldn't really get much of that because it would be 10, minus 2, 24, 2 and 1 all mixed in together. So it will look a bit like, I don't know, like a barcode number or something ridiculous like that. Um, and then the less than sign, by the way, is boolean less than equals, I'll put an underscore in because it's just easier that way. Less than uh, is b is less than c. Obviously. We know that 6 is not less than C, uh, 6 is not less than 3, so that would be false. Um, and if I wanted to um, output this as well, it would not output true or false um, because um, C++, when it outputs things, it doesn't, um, when it outputs Boolean values, it doesn't say true or false, it says 1 or 0. 1 meaning true. Zero meaning false. So we know that greater is true. So if I want to output greater, it will output one. And less than is false, so we know it's going to output zero. So all in all, this is the basic arithmetic section. Um, and I'm just going to put two end L's at the end because then we can separate by a couple of lines. Um, then we should get 10 minus 2, 24, 2, 1, 1, and 0 appear on our console window. So uh, once this is built and run, make sure that you do like the thing with setting it to standard output, otherwise it won't work um, and your computer will not thank you for doing that. So luckily I've already done that beforehand. Um, so basic arithmetics, our predictions are correct for everything, which is good. So you know how to do some basic arithmetics with C++. So Next section here, let's do C out, um, compound assignment, yeah. end L, kaboom. 
So now, because we're doing compound assignment, keyword assignment, we're going to be assigning new values to this. So it's not necessarily always going to be A is 4, B is 6, and C is 3. There's going to be new values. So say if I did, um, so the plus equals sign um, is the same as saying, let me just comment out this line, A equals A plus B is equivalent to A plus equals B. So those two lines are the same. So all right, is equivalent to a plus equals b. So if I write um, a plus equals b, then the new value of a will be 10. So now a is 10 because a equals a plus b and a plus b is 4 plus 6 is 10 so we're going to assign 10 to a so a will be 10 so now if we see out a we should get well we will get 10 because that is the new value of a and every single time we call a function with a it will now be 10 so, on the next line, we will do a minus equals c. So, what this does is it will be basically equivalent to a equals a minus minus c, which is the same as saying, which is the same as saying a equals 10 minus 3, which is the new values which is obviously saying a equals 7 so a will now be 7 so if we um, output a then it will be 7 um, we will just check everything so we have a prediction of 10 and 7 for the new bits come on yeah so compound assignment 10 and 7 because we've added 6 to a and then we've subtracted 3 from it yeah so Kaboom! So that is compound assignment. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. We'll just put two of those. So now we're going to be doing increment and decrement. So increment and... And decrement. Um, yeah. So let me put you in this situation. Someone has scored a point on a game that you've made, um, and you want to add one to their score. You could do score equals score plus one, but you're like, ha ha, you just taught me a really easy way to do it. Score plus equals one, much shorter. In fact, you'd still be wrong, it's not the shortest way. Um, to increment something by a value of one, you just write plus plus score. So if I wanted to, I could write, um, because we know that A is now 7, I could do C out plus plus A. And that should output 8, because we have added 1 to A. And we have to use this as a prefix, otherwise it will output 7 and then change the value of A and do all confusing stuff. And it doesn't really matter, it's just not worth doing. So we should output 8 there. So then if I output minus minus a, because these have again changed the values, instead of a now being 8, it's subtracted 1. So now a should be 7. So let's just run it again, just because you want to check everything works and our predictions are correct. It's added 1 to be 8, and then it's subtracted 1 again to be 7, which is cool. So we know it works. Now, we're going to do my favourite um, operator, I think, that exists in the history of C++. The conditional ternary operator. So, brackets, woohoo. 
just because, yeah, just because it's amazing. So, um, first we need a boolean. So, say if I make boolean, boolean z, just, I'm very creative, a boolean z equals true, let's say. The way a con uh, the conditional ternary operator works, it's it's basically saying um, condition um, question mark a colon b. So basically, um, if condition is true, um, so say if I say um, x y z equals that. So if condition is true, then x y z will now be the same as a and if it's not true then x y z will be the same as b so if i wanted to d make a new integer um so for example int q uh, equals z we know that z is true so i'm just using it as sort of a placeholder um so int q equals if z is true then it will be a value. If it's not, then it will be b. So in q equals z question mark. So if z is true, then the value of a will be assigned to q. If not, then the value of b will be assigned to q. C out q. What this will do is it will work out which one uh, if z is true, then q will be a, and we know that z is true because we've just set it to be true, so we know that q will have the value of a in it, and as we know from before, the value of a has been set to 7, so we should get 7 out of here. Yeah, ta-da! So, also, if we do this and we set it to false, then it will work on the value of b. Because z is false, so it will pick the second one out of this, out of this series. So, b here. Uh, what is b at the moment? We haven't actually modified b yet, so b is still 6. So, we should get 6 as an answer. So now if when I change that to false, we should get 6 as our output. Ta-da! So, next thing. Um, if I want to, I can also just write this exact thing and see out. So if I write that, then it will also output 6. Um, but also, instead of z, any Boolean expression will do. So like, if it's greater than... Or less than or any other thing it will work too so that will also be six now the final one that we need to look at is probably the easiest one and I didn't put it on the PowerPoint um, but it is really 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 useful it is the equality operator and the equality operator uh, it detects whether two things are the same as each other, and it outputs a boolean value. Um, that is true or false. So C out. Um, let's say um, the way you test if something is equal, you go A equal sign equal sign B. You can't just do A equals B because that sets the value of B to A. That's the assignment operator. And that's what we were doing in the last tutorial about variables. So, uh, the equality operator, C out. We know that A and B are not the same. So if I do C out, A is equal to B, then I know I'm going to get a zero, because zero means false. And we know that A is not the same as B, um, so this expression here is false. So it will output false or zero. So it will output zero when we run it. And I don't know why that happened. Um, uh, yeah, apparently you can't put that entire expression inside C out because it doesn't really like you. Uh, if you try and do that, then C++ doesn't really like you. I'm, I think that line will be a bit buggy as well, yeah. 
yeah. So basically, you can't put any of these special things in inside um, the seat out, apart from if I've shown you, you can. So if I just choose the letter L, for example, and I go Boolean L equals A is equal to B. So if A is the same as B, then A will be true. Well, obviously it isn't, so L is false. So if, when you output L, we get zero. Providing that the compiler doesn't fail miserably again. Yes, we get zero. And just to space things out a bit better. Yeah, like that. Anyway, um, so we also have the... I don't know what it's called, like the not the inequality operator, um, which is the exclamation mark equals sign. So boolean m equals uh, a is not equal to b. So you've got equals equals, which means they are exactly the same, exactly identical, and then you've got exclamation mark equals, which means they are not the same not identical so that will be true because we know that a is not the same as b so saying that a is not the same as b is correct so m will be true and then if i see out m then we should get a one ta-da here we go yes we get a one so that is everything on all of the operators um, and things and yeah yeah that's pretty much it for this episode um, again as it has been for the previous episodes this code will be up on Google Drive for download in the description um, so yeah yeah so yeah I will see you in the next episode where I will be doing I've got absolutely no idea um, but we'll be doing something something fun something something cool so yeah i will see you there and yeah yeah i'll just see you there like subscribe um comment be awesome and keep on programming see you next time